the of Shabbos, we we are standing at a very, very it's called Geirul Diket Zeit a time of enormous global proportion. We are less than two weeks, ten days, in fact, from Rosh Hashanah. And during Rosh Hashanah, what will be discussed in the Congress of the United States is an agreement that will allow Iran to develop its nuclear capacity within a short period of time and does not restrict Iran from developing intercontinental ballistic missiles which will be able to reach this country, the United States of America. For countries in the Middle East, especially Israel, and to a lesser degree, Saudi Arabia and Egypt, this represents an existential threat to their existence. Within nine minutes, Khumani will be able to eradicate more Jews than Hitler did in 12 years of Nazism. That's the horrific part that we're facing. But we Jews believe that everything is for the best and that ultimately good can come from every evil. What might the good be from this evil? The first thing is that this evil has created a greater unity among Jews in Israel and in this country and in the rest of the world than anything that's happened since the Holocaust. Despite what J Street tries to tell you, 90% of the Jewish people are opposed to this deal. Every major Jewish organization has tried to influence their congresspeople and senators to reject this deal. And people are going to go ahead and say, well, we told you it's impossible. The Democrats will knuckle under. Just because the Democrats will knuckle under doesn't mean we have to. And there will be a permanent rift between the Jewish people and the Democratic Party, thanks to Obama and Secretary John Kerry. Don't think that this is going to go by unnoticed. Don't think that Hillary or Billary or someone else can smooth things over afterwards in 2016-2017. The Jewish community has seen what exactly is being thought of it and has seen where their loyalty, what their loyalty has brought them. Just as with the black community, the filiality to the Democratic Party has not taken them out of poverty. On the contrary, those programs are meant to keep them in poverty so that they continue to work, vote Democratic. In the same way, the Democratic Party has wooed and given Kool-Aid, poison Kool-Aid, to the official Jewish community. I say official because they consider themselves official. The real Jewish community are those who follow God's laws. But all Jews belong to that Jewish community. And in the interim, a majority of Jews today are not yet totally observant. But even they, who today represent 
about 90% or 88% of our people in this country, they're also, for the most part, the vast majority of posters. And they have realized that they're looked upon as foolish idiots, useful idiots, who give their money, their time, their devotion to a group of people who really don't want to advance true democracy, but want to advance their socialist agenda upon themselves and upon the world. And they don't care who they injure in the process. In this case, this government has chosen to ignore the needs and the pleas of Israel, who is this country's staunchest ally in the Middle East, the only democracy in the Middle East, notwithstanding what Max Blumenthal says, the only democracy where there are Arabs voting, where there are Arabs in the Knesset, despite the fact that many of them oppose the country. But they're there. That's what democracy is all about. So the only democracy in the Middle East, they have now decided that they don't care if it exists. It can only exist if it will listen to the so-called reason voice of Obama and Kerry that is to give up all the territories that they gained in 1967, including the old city of Jerusalem, which in effect, not only would it desecrate the lives of the thousands of Jewish soldiers who died in the process of defending Israel, it will also put it to grave danger, even greater danger than today, all of the Jews of Israel. And so unless Israel is willing to put their head on the chopping block, Kerry and Obama, Obama and Kerry, have decided that Israel is expendable for their global interests. They can feign all they want. We Jews don't believe in talk. Talk is cheap. Even money is cheap. To a man who plays around with $19 trillion in debt, as if it was fictitious, a couple of billion here and a couple of billion there doesn't mean very much. It is action. And unfortunately, the actions of this administration have a lot to be desired. But what is the good that has come? Number one, Jewish unity. We're all united against it. Number two, when Jews unite, they become united also with the history and the traditions of the Jewish people. So this will create greater affiliation with the Torah and with the Torah's promise, with God's promise in the Torah, that the land of Israel belongs to the Jews, including all of the territories to the north and to the east of present-day Israel, which include all territories all across Syria, Iraq, and parts of Iran, all the way to the Persian Gulf. So number two, it not only unites us, will make us more holy. And number three, because this is a terrible deal, not just for Israel, but for Saudi Arabia and Egypt, the net result of this deal will be to destabilize Iran because they have greater resources than we do and more people and either there will be an armed conflict but in my opinion there will be a surgical strike at the leadership of Iran some time in the future and the people of Iran will have a respite of their despots and the terrible, terrible consequences of dealing with them through John Kerry and Barack Obama.